What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today I'm making NFL week 11 picks so let's hop into it. And if you like this type of stuff, please consider subscribing. It would really mean a lot to me. But anyway, last week, my record was 8-6 and six picking games. And that brings my overall record to 87-63. and 63, So pretty unspectacular in that regard. But last week was a pretty good week in football. There were six games that were won on a walk-off field goal, which was just crazy. But anyway, we're moving on to week 11. And this week, we have four teams on their bye. We have the Atlanta Falcons, the Indianapolis Colts, the New England Patriots, and the New Orleans Saints. So those four teams are on their bye this week. So moving over to the picks, on Thursday Night Football, we have an AFC North showdown. We have the Cincinnati Bengals on the road at the Baltimore Ravens. Both of these teams did lose last week. The Bengals lost to the Houston Texans in a shootout, and the Texans kicked a game-winning field goal. The Ravens lost to the Browns, also kind of in a shootout game, and the Browns kicked a game-winning field goal. So those were two of the six game-winning field goals were against both of these teams right here. But finally, we got some good primetime games. We're not stuck with the Jets or the Raiders or the Bears or the Panthers. We got some good primetime games this week. So this should be a really good game. I do think it'll be relatively high scoring right here. Cincinnati will probably be without wide receiver T. Higgins once again. So just one less weapon for Joe Burrow and that offense. The Ravens, on the other hand, probably should have beat the Browns last week. They didn't. The Browns came back from 14 down in the fourth quarter and stunned the Ravens. So both of these teams are looking to rebound, get back in that win column. And crazy enough, if the Bengals win this game right here against the Ravens, the winner of the Pittsburgh Steelers-Cleveland Browns game this week will take first place in the AFC North, which is just crazy. Baltimore wants to win to keep that lead alive. And I actually have the Bengals going on the road right here and beating the Ravens. This year, the Ravens have been playing really solid in the first three quarters of the game. But all three of their losses have come from them blowing leads in the fourth quarter. And in order to win in the National Football League, you definitely got to close out games. So that's one of Baltimore's main weaknesses. So if Cincinnati keeps this game close for majority or if they run away with it early, Baltimore has struggled this year to close games. And I think that can just come and bite them in the butt once again in this game. But I have Cincinnati winning a close one right here by a score of 26 to 24. Then we have the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road at the Cleveland Browns, and this is their second and final meeting of the season unless they somehow meet in the playoffs, but this is their last meeting. The Steelers did win the first game, and that was the game Cleveland lost Nick Chubb to a season-ending knee injury. And once again, in typical AFC North fashion, I do think this will be a really good game, but I do have the Browns running away with this game right here, so I am picking the Browns right here. But like the Steelers this year, they are 6-3, and three, much like the Cleveland Browns. But they're probably the worst 6-3 and three team. Much like a few years ago when they were 11-0, they were like the worst unbeaten team ever. And then they fell apart at the end of the season and then lost in the wild card game in the playoffs. But like, I have that same feeling with the Steelers this year. It's like, yes, they're 6-3. and three, They are competing. I'm not trying to take that away from them. But, you know, like they're getting outgained in every game. Their defense is just holding on. They have to win these low scoring games. And the Browns are a team where they can put up a ton of points. And if they do that, I have a hard time seeing the Steelers keeping up in this game. So I have the Browns win this one, and I do think it'll be close for a while, but I do have the Browns just kind of pulling it away and having a convincing win right here at home by a score of 30-13. to 13. Then going from the AFC North, we're now in the NFC North. We have the Chicago Bears on the road at the Detroit Lions. Detroit won a shootout against the Chargers last week. What was it? 41-38. to 38. Gotta feel bad for those Chargers fans. The Bears, on the other hand, they're 3-7. and seven. They did win against the Panthers on Thursday Night Football, but still one of the bottom-tier teams in this league. Justin Fields, will he be back for this game? I'm still not 100% sure on that. I do think it's still up in the air. But regardless of who the Chicago Bears quarterback is in this game, I don't see them beating the Lions at all. The Lions are playing really good football. They're 7-2. and two. So whoever quarterbacks the Bears in this game, I think it will be in a losing effort. And I have Detroit winning this game right here rather easily by a score of 27-9. to nine. Then we have the Los Angeles Chargers on the road at the Green Bay Packers. Both of these teams did lose last week. The Chargers lost to the Lions. The Packers did lose to the Steelers. The Packers still figuring things out. I don't know if Jordan Love is their future at quarterback, so a change may be coming for them in this offseason. I don't know if they're sold on him yet. The Chargers, on the other hand, their offense, they're clicking. They scored 38 points last week, would have won against pretty much any other team. Detroit just scored more than them, and this Chargers defense is a huge liability. And I honestly feel bad for Chargers fans, but it seems like their defense just lets them down time and time again. And that's just devastating. It's demoralizing. But in this game right here, I don't think the Packers can really keep up with the Chargers. This game is in Green Bay, and there is a chance of rain. So I don't think it's going to be a super high scoring game right here. But if the Chargers, if they can get a lead kind of padded early, I don't think their defense can blow this game just because 
I don't think the Packers have the firepower to keep up with the Chargers. So I do have the Chargers winning this game on the road right here by a score of 24 to 10. And the reason I have it low is because, like I said, in the rain, I don't think it's going to be a super high scoring game, but the Chargers should win it comfortably. Then we have the Las Vegas Raiders at the Miami Dolphins. The Raiders sitting at 500 at 5-5. Five and five. The Dolphins are coming off their bye right here. They are 6-3. and three. And the Raiders are just kind of hanging around. They've had their ups. They've had their downs. They've gone through a lot of turmoil this offseason. Their interim head coach, Antonio Pierce, is 2-0 and with the team. So they're playing relatively good under him. Last week against the Jets wasn't as convincing as when they played the Giants a couple of weeks ago. But still, they're winning. And they're still right in the thick of things right here. The Dolphins, like I said, coming off their bye. And the Dolphins have struggled against teams 500 or better this year. All their losses have come against teams over the 500 mark. So will they struggle with this Raiders team? Will they finally get over the hump and beat a 500 or better team? And I do think they will right here with this Raiders team just because of their offensive firepower and the fact that the Raiders have benched Jimmy Garoppolo in favor of rookie O'Connell. So I think that benefits Miami. So I have the Dolphins winning this game right here at home by a score of 34 to 16. Then we have an NFC East showdown. We have the New York Giants on the road at the Washington Commanders. Both of these teams pretty underwhelming if you ask me. This is their second matchup of the year. The Giants were able to win the first matchup with Tyrod Taylor at quarterback, but he is injured. Daniel Jones also injured. So the Giants have third string quarterback DeVito playing in this game. The Commanders. They're sitting at 4-6, and kind of unspectacular, like I said. Sam Howe does lead the league in passing, I seen. So that was definitely a shock. But I do have the Commanders winning this game right here against the Giants, improving to 5-6, and kind of keeping their season alive right here. And I have them winning it by a score of 20-14. to Then we have the Dallas Cowboys on the road at the Carolina Panthers. The Cowboys pummeled the Giants last week, much like they did in Week 1. They've just had their way with them this season. They're playing really good. Dak Prescott's playing good. CeeDee Lamb's playing great. Not much issues going on with Dallas right now. Carolina, on the other hand, they're not playing the greatest. They're 1-8 and eight for crying out loud. So I really don't think they have much of a chance in this game right here. And I have Dallas winning this game rather easily by a score of 38-17. to 17, And I really just don't see, unless something insane happens, the Panthers really having much of a chance in this game. But hey, the Cowboys did lose to the Cardinals early on in the season. So anything is possible. But I just really don't see that happening. So I have the Cowboys winning this game right here. Then we have an AFC South divisional matchup. There is quite a few divisional matchups this week. This time we have the Tennessee Titans on the road at the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Titans sitting at 3-6, and six, the Jaguars sitting at 6-3. and three. And last week, the Jaguars got absolutely humbled by the San Francisco 49ers. That defensive line with Chase Young, Nick Bosa, just absolutely wreaked havoc. The Jaguars were only able to muster like three points, and what, I want to say the final score was like 34 or 38-3 to three or something like that. Just absolutely destroyed. And I had the Jaguars picked to win. I thought they were playing good football. They didn't lose in the month of October. And then the San Francisco 49ers, who had lost three straight coming into the game, absolutely destroyed them. So I know they're looking to rebound. Tennessee, on the other hand, the season's kind of been a wash. Ryan Tannehill got injured. Will Levis will be starting this game once again. This is another one of those games where there is a decent chance for it to rain the duration of the game. And I'm not really sure who that benefits. Granted, the Titans do have Derrick Henry. And he is a better running back than what the Jacksonville Jaguars have in Travis Etienne. But Etienne has been playing pretty good this season. So both of these teams could very easily win it. But I don't think it's going to be a super high scoring game. But with how bad the Jaguars got beat last week, I know they want to get that bad taste out of their mouth. So I do have the Jaguars winning this game right here at home by a score of 23 to 13. Then we have the Arizona Cardinals on the road at the Houston Texans. The Cardinals did get Kyler Murray back last week and they were able to beat the Atlanta Falcons. The Texans, on the other hand, beat Cincinnati last week. C.J. Stroud proven that he should have been the number one overall pick in this past year's draft. And I was definitely wrong about him as I didn't think Ohio State quarterbacks pan out well in the NFL at all. And I know it is his first season. He's only, this will be his 10th game, but still he's definitely exceeding expectations and he is definitely the front runner for rookie of the year. And I definitely think he should be in the MVP conversation. But this game, I do think it will be a relatively good game if Kyler Murray and this Cardinals team plays like they did last week. They had a back and forth game with the Falcons. And I see this game kind of going in the same way, just kind of going back and forth, relatively high scoring right here. But I do have CJ Stroud and the Texans winning this shootout right here at home by a score of 35 to 27. Then we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the road at the San Francisco 49ers. The Buccaneers were able to get a win last week. They are one game under 500. The 49ers Broke their three-game losing streak by absolutely destroying the Jacksonville Jaguars last week. They're back. But Christian McCaffrey's touchdown streak 
did end. But regardless, the 49ers did win, and I think they'll just keep the winning going. They are back. That defensive line with Chase Young and Nick Bosa looks scary. And I think Baker Mayfield and this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line are in for a long day right here in San Francisco. And I have the 49ers winning this one by a score of 26 to 16. Then we have an AFC East showdown. We have the New York Jets on the road at the Buffalo Bills. This is their second matchup of the year. They played each other in week one. Aaron Rodgers went down with his Achilles injury. The Jets stormed back and won that game, shocking the Bills. And the Jets are four and five. They're one game under 500. The Bills are sitting at 500 at five and five. The Jets lost last week to the Raiders. The Bills lost last week to the Denver Broncos, who are honestly playing pretty good football right now. They've definitely turned their season around, but I'll get to them later. And I don't know what's going on with Buffalo. They've had a roller coaster ride of the season. Josh Allen's really not playing great. I know there's turmoil going on right now. As soon as I started making this video, I got a notification that said Buffalo just fired their offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey. So changes in that front office are coming for them. And it's kind of just a mess right now for them. The Jets, on the other hand, they're looking to just stay around that 500 mark, stay competitive, stay in the thick of things. Because Aaron Rodgers said he's trying to come back by the middle or end of December. And if the Jets are still competitive at that point, he could definitely help this team make a playoff push. And I know the Jets did win their first matchup. And I know the Bills really haven't been playing good. But at the same time, I really can't pick against the Bills right here, especially with the Jets and kind of the uncertainty of Zach Wilson at quarterback. Some games he plays, he looks really good. Others, he just looks really bad. Buffalo, they have had a little bit better of a track record. But this year, it's just kind of, this was one of those toss-up games. It could really go either way. So I did have trouble picking it, but I am going to give it to Buffalo right here. They are the home team. It's another one of those games where it's going to rain. So I think it's going to be relatively low scoring, close game right here. It's the divisional game, so it should be close scoring. But I have Buffalo winning it by a score of 23 to 19. Then we have an NFC West battle. We have the Seattle Seahawks on the road at the Los Angeles Rams. This is their second and final meeting of the season. The Rams were able to beat the Seahawks earlier in the year. Good news for the Rams, though, is they should be getting quarterback Matthew Stafford back for this game right here. The Seahawks, they did win last week. The Rams are coming off their bye, so extra week to prepare, an extra week for Matthew Stafford to get healthy and be ready for this game right here. I don't think it's official that he's playing, but a lot of the talk and reports that I've seen we're saying that he should be playing in this game. So I'm going based off that, that he will be playing in this game. And this is another one of those games where I kind of had trouble picking it right here. I know Seattle is having a much better season than the Rams, but Seattle's had their ups and downs. They did lose to the Rams early on. So the Rams do have their number this season. So it's just one of those games that could really go either way. And if Matthew Stafford isn't ready to play in this game, it will be quarterback Carson Wentz for the Rams. And granted, he hasn't played in a long time, but he is still a relatively good NFL quarterback. He led the Eagles to the playoffs and they went on to win a Super Bowl, but he got injured. But still, I like the Rams in this matchup. They beat Seattle earlier this year in Seattle. And I think this is just one of those cases where a team that's not having a good season just has a division opponent's number. It's just that they have their number this year and Seattle just loses a close game right here by a score of 24 to 23. Then on Sunday night football, we have the 6-4 and four Minnesota Vikings on the road at the 4-5 and five Denver Broncos. And about a month into the season, if you looked ahead at this matchup, you would have probably been dreading it. Minnesota started off, what, 0-3. Same with the Broncos. They really had horrible starts to the year. But both of these teams have definitely turned it around. Minnesota is on, what, a five-game winning streak right now. Granted, they lost Kirk Cousins to an Achilles injury, and that was a devastating blow. But they did trade for quarterback Josh Dobbs, who led them to a win last week. The Broncos, on the other hand, Sean Payton, Russell Wilson, have definitely turned the boat around. They're on a three-game win streak of their own. They beat the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Packers in that span. I know the Packers game really doesn't compare to, like, the Chiefs win, but still, they're playing good football right now. So this should be a really good matchup. But once again, at least this week's primetime games are good games. They're either good teams against good teams or teams that are playing well against teams that are playing well. And this game right here is no exception. And once again, this is another one that was pretty hard to pick. But the Vikings might be getting Justin Jefferson back, so getting your best player back on the field has never hurt a team. And this is just another one of those games where it could really go either way. But I just like the Vikings' chances right here. They've won five in a row. I know the Broncos have been playing good football, and they've beaten good teams in this span. But I think Minnesota goes into Denver, kind of shocks them right here. Josh Dobbs gets another crazy win right here. And the Vikings keep pace with the Lions for the NFC North title. And I have the Vikings winning this close game right here by a score of 28 to 24. And then closing out the week on Monday Night Football, we have a rematch of the Super Bowl. We have the Philadelphia Eagles on the road at the Kansas City Chiefs. The best team in the NFC versus the best team in the AFC. 
eight and one Eagles, seven and two Chiefs, and this should be a good one. Both of these teams are coming off their bye week, so an extra week to prepare for this game and an extra day because it's on Monday night. But regardless, this should be a fun one. I do expect this game to be relatively high scoring. I don't think it's going to be as high scoring as the Super Bowl was, but it should be a really good game. The Chiefs did lose to the Broncos right before their bye, so even though they're both coming off their bye, the Chiefs are kind of coming off a loss as well. And this is another toss-up game right here. It could really go either way. It is being played in Arrowhead. That is a tough stadium to go into and win. But regardless, I'm giving it to the Philadelphia Eagles right here. I think overall for this entire season, they've just played better than the Chiefs. Like the Chiefs, granted, they've only lost two games, but like some games were closer. The Eagles have played more consistent than the Chiefs longer through this season. And for that reason, that's kind of just swayed me over to the Eagles side. But yeah, there's just a ton of headlines into this game. You know, the Kelsey brothers going at it. Taylor Swift's probably going to be in attendance, which that really doesn't matter. But still, I have the Eagles winning this game by a score of 27 to 24. So yeah, those are my NFL Week 11 picks. Please let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will catch you with another video. God bless.